okay, I have a detail in Star Trek Lower Decks that I don't think anybody else caught. We'll talk about that in this video. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd, and on this episode of Star Trek Lower Decks, what we see is uh, a couple of good B-plots here. One of them is uh, Rutherford and Tindy on the holodeck, and in uh, the original series, well, they make some reference to that in this story that says uh, 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 they're going to the holodeck for a training program, and it's something that Rutherford has written. And Rutherford said, uh, holodeck programs aren't all um, Sherlock Holmes, Robin Hood, Cyrano de Bergerac, and, and Einstein, uh, but uh, kind of an inside joke there that uh, Robin Hood was not done on the holodeck. It was part of a Q episode where the TNG crew are put together as Robin Hood and his merry men with um, a wonderful line by Worf who says, uh, Captain, I protest, I am not a merry man. Anyway, uh, in this episode, uh, there is, of course, as soon as you get on the holodeck, there's going to be some kind of holodeck accident. And uh, this is part of the driving plot, uh, including a device on the holodeck that they call Badgie. Now, Badgie looks very much like Clippy, which used to be on all the Windows um, platforms uh, back in the day when uh, it would just stand in the corner and uh, leer at you or uh, apparently pat its foot or offer some kind of help. It was usually more annoying than anything else and to Microsoft's credit they got rid of it. Well uh, they make a um, parody of that in this which they call Badgie except Badgie is uh, at first uh, very eager to help and uh, later on turns malevolent. We won't go any further there, so it doesn't spoil it, but uh, that's something to watch for. The other B story is uh, a friend of Boimler's, he's known since the Academy, Fletcher, who uh, helps him out uh, with uh, putting isolinear chips into a computer core. And uh, he is somewhat like Boimler, where he's kind of nerdy and kind of awkward, but um, perhaps uh, not quite as... Um, full of the Starfleet ethics as you might like. And so uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, sub-story going on as well. The main story is that there is a bunch of space junk out there that belongs to the Federation, and the Cerritos is in a conflict with a salvage ship that wants to take all of this away. So there are a lot of Easter eggs noting uh, clamshell communicators and things like this. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, uh, there are all kinds of things that go wrong in the lower decks that drive the plot. And um, we see the beginnings of a uh, kind of a romance with uh, uh, Tindy and Rutherford. And uh, it, it's, it's kind of on again and off again the way it's been working. Uh, we think that uh, this is eventually going to develop into something as the characters go on. The, the episodes are standalone, but uh, the characters appear to be evolving into something that's a little more defined, uh, a little more identifiable. And uh, I have to say that I like the direction that uh, Boimler and Mariner are going. They're becoming pretty close friends, kind of buddies, and uh, it's not going to be any romance there, but it's going to be a, a good working relationship between the two of them. And uh, there's there's some nice points in there of the um, of what Starfleet is about, and uh, uh, serious as anything, even in a cartoon series. But the thing I wanted to point out, and uh, this is something that I don't think anybody else has caught up on, is that uh, Fletcher went to the Academy with Boimler. Now, if you recall from the original series, any time that Kirk said he had been at the Academy with somebody, there was always something that was going to go wrong. Uh, they either were going to 
die. They were going to go crazy. They were going to go rogue. Uh, something else was going to happen. So it was almost a tell any time that Kirk said, I knew this person in the Academy. And that went so far as to the movie Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, where uh, Captain Terrell uh, originally was going to be someone that Kirk knew from the Academy, and they realized that it was going to give away the fact that Terrell was going to um, turn on Kirk and company, and so um, they put in a line instead that said, I've never even met Admiral Kirk whenever he's talking to Khan. So that was purposely put in there to um, make sure that it did not give us any kind of indication that he was going to die or he was going to join the other side, which in fact he did both. So uh, this is what uh, gives Fletcher away. He is a uh, uh, He is an academy associate of Boimler. Now, we're not going to say what happens to him, uh, but let's just say that uh, he is one of the drivers of the plot, and uh, the um, producers are very astute in noting this little bit of Star Trek trivia. It's not something that is identifiable as just a, a Batla or a, um, um, a clamshell communicator or uh, things like that, mentions of Q uh, that they did during the show, uh, but but something that was just kind of more buried in the plot, something that's never been said out loud. And uh, my hats off to the uh, producers for uh, putting in this little bit here, uh, just uh, just one line um, that uh, Boimler knew in the Academy. I, I kind of like that. So uh, that is the uh, episode here. Uh, there are others uh, that are coming pretty soon. Uh, we're still looking forward to uh, season three of Discovery. And uh, if you saw the panels on that so far, you know that it's going to be a rather interesting season in that um, um, Burnham is going to find a new friend. Uh, the ship is going to be in a new place, and the Federation, through no fault of its own, uh, has found itself as a much smaller organization than it used to be. So uh, part of what's going to be driving the plot in that season is going to be uh, them finding out just what happened, what was the burn, and, and how that had an effect on the Federation. Also, we had uh, some details on Strange New Worlds, and Strange New Worlds, uh, we're going to get a much more detailed backstory on number one. Uh, we uh, are going to have a continuing uh, plot device, even though these uh, episodes are going to be standalone. Uh, there is going to be references made to something important to uh, Captain Pike, and uh, I suspect this is still the foreshadowing of his accident once he's promoted. And uh, I, I think that references are going to be made to that uh, during the series. So that's, uh, that's something to look for. And uh, in Picard, which is probably a year away before it goes into production, uh, we're uh, being told that uh, uh, by Patrick Stewart himself that uh, we're going to see things in season two of Picard that we've never seen in Star Trek before. And so uh, that opens up a lot of possibilities. There have been some... Um, speculation so far, but uh, be interested in, to uh, know what you think about this and uh, put it in the comments below. Of course, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Ring the bell so we know when the next video is coming your way, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Until then, don't go far.